I'm at the idea stage now of the FMP and I'm going to be doing a short film which relies heavily on aspect ratios. So I'm looking for a story that fits in with that um, element. So here is my mind map of my um, idea about claustrophobia and acrophobia. So it's about a main protagonist who's who has a fear of going outside, which is agoraphobia, but he's also afraid of um, being inside, which is claustrophobia. So one of the plot ideas I put um, here is that every time the character um, thinks about being outside, the aspect ratio expands to 16 by 9, and when he's inside, he is, uh, uh, the aspect ratio shrinks down to 4 by 3, so we see him in an enclosed um, location and um, the um, equipment that I will need will be a Blackmagic Cinema Pocket 4K uh, camera and that provides incredible um, detail and clarity that Hollywood uh, filmmakers use and um, the location and the uh, there's going to be different locations in the film so one area might be a really big hill area to showcase the acrophobia scenes and one might be a um, small room area to showcase the claustrophobia scenes with, with, the, with the character and I'm going to be the only protagonist in this film so it's only going to be me acting. So yeah, I hope this concept is interesting and I hope I can pull it off really. So it should be cool. I'm still looking for a story to go with aspect ratios and this is another idea about someone with synesthesia. So it's a con it's a condition where people people's senses get mixed up. So for example, they taste sound or they hear like different they hear different sounds to what other people hear. So this is my mind map I made of the potential concept that I could pull off. So so one of the plot ideas here is that I put down, I could use different music, such as film scores or, um, well, one of the music choices that I was gonna pick as the baseline was gonna be um, Daft Punk's um, Touch from their latest from their latest album, Ran uh, Random Access Memories. And I think that really, really fits the tone and the emotion of the film. But it would be, um, it would basically involve each musical piece pushes the story in some way so it would basically the character would put his hand on an object and then it, it would play a different musical track every time which could be interesting and um it would um it would be a silent film so there'd be no dialogue just only music and like ambience which would be interesting um, different. It, it would also have different lighting environments, and to, yeah, it would also have different lighting uh, lighting environments to express what the character's feelings are being portrayed on screen, uh, which be in, which be interesting. Um, and of course, it's only going to be one solo character because I want to. Well, not because I want to, but it's only going to be one solo character. Which is going to be me because of coronavirus times. Should be interesting. So, um, yeah, basically, the character has a condition that connects the senses when he touches different objects, which is a interesting idea, I think. So, yeah, I think that's a good potential concept to go with. And I just hope it will be interesting enough, really. Another idea to go with aspect ratios is the idea, like Christopher Nolan's Memento, where a man with no memory tattoos his body with things that people have explained to him that he can't remember. So, this is my mind map on this. So one of the really crucial points would be getting the pre-production right really, really hit the nail on the head with this one because this would require 
a lot of script writing that I myself would be able to understand and take in because the film is not in chronicle or chronological order as it jumps around from scene to scene and you have to piece it together but but via multiple rewatches so that would be a um consideration to take in also the use of polaroid photos as a guide so that would be explaining key events about what would happen in this uh idea so the use of photos would be used to guide but also to dis to distort the audience of uh, the audience's understanding of what would be happening throughout the film whether it's in sequence or out of sequence so that'd be an interesting point to focus on i think the use of photos and also post-it notes to and also objects to piece together um the main protagonist's fractured past so he would you know find polaroids post-it notes or different objects that would link to his past so when he touches them or when he goes near him there's automatically flashbacks about about why about how that object or photograph relates to his past in some way so it all kind of brings it full circle so in terms of story ideas i was thinking that this would be split into chapters so like chapter one would be i don't know the beginning chapter two would be the middle and then chapter three would be where he where he where he where he remembers everything but it would also probably have a cliffhanger ending to make the audience have a suspenseful moment but also shock them a little bit um so this one would include lots of heavy visual effects like masking to um express what's going on in 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 in, in the character's head with you know also lots of green screen as well so some scenes would be repeated but in different takes to guide the audience to what's happening as well overall i think this idea could be really interesting but i think it's the hardest one to pull off because of the elements i just explained so yeah this could be one to go with i think potentially this idea i think is really really um how do i put this really immersive because it's a it's a uh, person coming out of a frame who was trapped in i would say like another dimension so as the person's stepping out of the frame um the aspect ratio could be a really good vehicle and a really good storytelling tool to show what's happening to the character's world so um this idea or concept would require heavy vfx to showcase the character being in his other dimension so i would need to find a way of making the footage that i shoot in in another location look like an old painting from the olden days and also i would need to find a way of how do i how do i problem solve with putting the footage that i shoot in the other location onto the frame itself so i think i would need to corner pin one two three four then mask that out and then i would need to, i think track it so it's stay static so that's one of the technical challenges for me i think with this one but one of the main primary focuses i think would be how do i get the composition and framing right so that it's one engaging but two each frame is distinctly different from the other so cinematography is really i think a key to this one and also music as well because i want music to really be the secondary element to the painting element if that makes sense so i think music will heavily play a big role in this film with you know 
the character coming out of a painting, the character going on a journey, and then the third, the uh, fi final scene would be the character finding his purpose. So that will need to be worked out and researched heavily, I think. So that would be a really interesting concept to go ahead with, because I think, I mean, it's something that I've never done before, but also I'm really intrigued to try it and see if it works or not, really. So I've got the FMP coming up soon, but since we're still in lockdown um, at home, so I've got the I've got the FMP coming up soon, but since we've been in lockdown since Christmas, um, I want to future proof my project. So I'm doing an inventory of my own equipment in case um, I can't hire any equipment at college due to the pandemic restrictions and also social, um, social distancing. So here's my main um, camera I'm going to be shooting with. It's going to be the um, Canon, my trusty Canon 750D. And it's really cool because it has a um, really nice little um, LCD screen that um, helps me identify what I'm looking at on, on the small screen. So I don't have to peek every, um, so I don't have to guess if the, um, if the camera's in frame or not, which is cool. And um, also, um, I've got a um, really cool slider, which is um, I got a really cool slider, which is which allows me to get really interesting and unique shots with this little cool uh, gadget. And also, it's got a um, thread here, which allows me to mount you know the camera and also any or any other um, camera I want on, on here. And it's got these cool little um it's got these cool little uh ball heads to um keep it stable on the ground and it's also got um some threads here to, to thread on a tripod or other um film no, other um equipment so if we take a peek in here um i'm going to be using these light stands which um expand out and um, along with these uh, light uh, modules that um, screw on a hair and creates a really suitable size I feel. So these light modules have a, a small battery in them which you can detach and put back on again and these have three buttons. This middle one is you know, obviously to turn it on and um, this minus one is to um, is to decrease the amount of uh, light coming through, and this plus button is um, to get full maximum light. But I shouldn't do that because it will probably break the sensor of the uh, sensor of my recording device. Um, so I have two of those. So that's going to be really helpful to the dark scenes I'm going to be filming in. So it will enable me to get really sufficient light when there wouldn't be any if I wouldn't have those. So that's a really, really helpful tool. And this is a really handy dandy um, shotgun uh, micro uh, microphone by Rode, where I just screw on to the top of here. I screw it down in, in there and it goes on like that. And then it's got a, a jack in here. So that allows me to record good audio from that microphone, which is cool. And oh, and by the way, the um, camera lens is just a standard kit lens it's come with. It's all right, it's good, it's helpful. And um, if we look in here, these, um, these other stands are, these other stands are gonna be used for um, hanging the frame on. So there's one in here, and basically this will clip, um, well, normally it will clip on there, and that would be where the frame would potentially hang. But the, prob but the problem I've got is how I'm gonna need to find a solution on how to hang the frame so it's stable without falling off. So that's gonna be one problem I have to solve really in depth. And I think that's gonna be the main issue really. 
about it, but this is all my equipment and um, obviously my my um, the uh, my uh, recording device on it now, but I've got a tripod that I'm putting at, so that's, it's just the cheap one, but it, it does the job well, I like it, I like it, so that's all my equipment um, and yeah, um, I'm going to be shooting soon, so it'll be cool, look out for it, it'll be cool. So we uh, successfully found a frame overnight for the project and um, it's near Portsmouth. So it's a long trek, but I hope it's worth it. So I got my atlas and some few stuff to keep me occupied on the journey. So uh, yeah, I hope it goes well. Really. <laughs> And uh, we got the item we've been looking for. It's a picture frame from years back, and this is going to be the main element of the short film. So this is like what ties it all together, really. So um, I'm, I'm, you know, looking forward to experimenting with this in different ways in the filming process. So yeah, it'll be fun. Today I've arranged to go to an old location in Croydon for the test shoot with the frame and I think it might uh, sh uh, suit the style, so this is the equipment I'm bringing. Um, it's the backdrop with the holders on it for, to uh, support the frame, hopefully, and also my tripod for some um, static shots, and also my camera with, with the ability to document it on it, and also my gimbal and some other things in here. So I hope it goes well. So we've cleared the mantelpiece. piece. And um, and we're taking the old frame down now, so it's cool. There it is. So this is the um, frame I plan to use up on that wall, but we have a prob slight problem. So it's the matter of fitting nails or rods in each of these corners or the main middle of it to hang over there. So that's the main problem for this prop. I'm going to figure out how to do it. reason why it's portrait and not horizontal is for the first location is going to be quite limited in scope and space so that's why I've decided to put it portrait and also a fra it's also a framing um, thing as well about how I want it to go to transition into the um, location footage but also the biggest thing is we have to put fittings on the back so it can so the painting can fit onto the wall without any hassle really. So how can we solve the problem of fitting the frame onto here? Okay Jamie, what I think, I think what we could do yeah. if we use these plastic yeah. pipe clips which yeah. are for plumbing, yeah. but this tube happens to be the same size yeah. as a plumbing tube more yeah. or less. Yeah. So if we, if we screw these to the back of the frame yeah. and then you'll be able to snap the frame this onto the, the tube in the frame yeah. and then you can probably mount your picture at any kind of convenient angle you want because they're quite stiff. Yeah. So I think that'll solve it for locating it on here. Yeah. And cool. you should be okay with that. Yeah, that's cool, yeah. That's it, excellent. We'll go along and do each one of those. Do the ones at the top first, Jamie, then we just spin it over. That's it, just pull it along so it's convenient for you. Get the, get the blade under there, Jamie. Can push it out a little bit. It's just not just like this one side. Just pull it out a little bit, and you'll be able to grab hold of that. Got it? That's it. Pull it down. That's it. Well done. Excellent. Pull it 
put it closer to you then it's easier to do. So I'm at the stage now where I've bought this uh, really crazy preset pack and it's basically all these different painting and drawing styles and I've opted to go for a oil painting Van Gogh um, preset. So I've dropped the fit. I've uh, dropped the footage that I shot at the test shoot um, site at Elmwood Road in Croydon. So this is the um, After Effects timeline of it. Uh, oops, sorry. Yeah. So this is the After Effects timeline of it. So as you can see. Yeah, so basically this is the, uh, basically this um, clip here is just the static green screen um, footage that I shot. And this is the frame around it. So I drew a mask um, in on uh, this clip. So that basically isolates the frame. So you can see the frame and other objects there. So that basically allows me to cut in anywhere I want to. And yeah, it, it, I, I basically just corner pin this so it's static and it won't move. So, oh, hang on. Uh, and it's the result. It's so cool. And this is a really fun process, but it takes about an hour, two or three hours to render each thing because it's doing it frame by frame. So that is the only major downside of it. So I'm going to have to plan my time when I'm filming, filming accordingly. So to get it really tight and not extend. Well, I can extend the clips by like one or two seconds, but that's it for breathing room. So I hope it goes well and, you know for the best really i'm praying it works hopefully it will from this test footage so yeah today i would like to talk to you about some of the costumes that i'm going to be wearing in my film called unboxing so i've got some notes to help me because i struggle on camera really um so i'm going to be the only actor slash main character in the film so so I picked two simple monochrome costumes, a black, you know, costume and a white one. So we see the black one the first time we see the character in a, in a painting. Uh, the reason why I chose black is because during my research I found this really interesting After Effects plugin called, called Creation Effects and it has all these different art effects and that and that's what I'm going to use to create the painting footage but I fiddled around with you know creation effects as anyone does when they get a new plugin for the software and I realized that on reflection um the black costume works better in the painting footage but also it works better against light backgrounds and looks pretty much unusable in dark backgrounds because of the two colours contrasting so that's why I chose the black one so we see the white costume when the character comes out of the painting so reasons for this I, I reflected in the practical that it's going to be that the portions I'm going to wear this costume in is going to be a night shoot so obviously it will look marginally better in the night shoot because of the light and also and also the different color contrasting but also two different uh, conceptual reasons one is the characters between two worlds so he's not fully defined yet as a character but also he's not real and he's not inside the painting so the second conceptual reason is that um the white costume is an idea of a blank canvas for the character and that his journey's unformed yet.
I finished filming the first and final scene on the North Downs up on Brygate Hill and it went really well but the conditions were, were really poor because there was icy cold freezing rain and we had to judge what time the rain finished and the sun opened up to get the shots we wanted but I got all the shots I wanted and I was really really impressed with them so yeah yeah I'm uh, really happy with them so um yeah, I'm glad that um, I'm uh, glad that I got in. The, um, um, I'm glad that I got in the bag, and uh, yeah, just really relieved. Um, I got those shots that I wanted. So.